In this video, I'm going to go through how to determine the concentration of a solution in the most common unit used in chemistry called molarity. The first thing I'm going to do, though, is I'm going to talk about a solvent and a solute and the solution. So here I have just a, a either salt, we'll say, or sugar. So if I put one little scoop um, of salt or sugar in this cup of water, I'm putting the solute into the solvent and dissolving it so that it has a uniform distributed mixture that is homogeneous, meaning you can't see um, any differences with just your own eyes. So right there I dissolved um, just a small amount, and again I'm going to say it's salt or sugar. Um, if I add more salt or sugar, okay, so if I had another scoop, I now have made the same amount of solution, approximately the same volume, I've made it more concentrated. So what if I had the, the ability to mass out, you know, another scoop of this salt or sugar, weigh it, and put it into this solvent, so again, the solute solvent, and dissolve it, what would be the concentration of my solution at this point? So that's what we're going to learn in this video. So the first thing is to have these terms written down. The next is the most common type of conversion or unit used in chemistry is called molarity. So as long as we have the moles of the solute, and typically you'd get the mass first and then convert it to moles by using molar mass, and then you'd have the volume, a lot of times not in liters, you'd have it maybe milliliters, like this would be a certain milliliter amount of uh, solution. So that would go on the bottom. So many times when you see um, a molarity like we had in the last little demonstration that I went through with magnesium and hydrochloric acid, when I said something was 1.5 molar, what that meant is, is that on the top, let me slide it down here, okay, is that uh, that was 1.5 moles of HCl if I used an entire liter, but you'll notice in that video um, I used only 25 milliliters, so I didn't use a whole 1.5 mole. So many times you'll have a, a certain mole amount divided by a certain volume amount. When you divide those, then you get the molarity. Okay? So again, with all these problems, keep in mind, you always want to know two things. The moles of the solute and the liters of the solution. Okay? So these are always going to be the two things I'm going to keep kind of using is which one of those do we have. The other thing is you're going to need some conversions. I talked about the fact that we couldn't calculate the molarity of this um, you know, sugar or salt solution unless I knew the molar mass. Okay, So if I know the molar mass for either salt or sugar, so I'm just going to put them here, and I had the mass, I could then calculate the moles. I won't because I, don't, I actually don't want you to know the identity of the solution. Um, so if I had 58 grams, I'd have a whole mole. Well, there's no way that that's 58 grams, okay? So I'd have less than a mole that I put in there. So I'd find that mole amount. And if it was sugar, it would just be a much higher molar mass. All right, after that, you still need one more thing. You're going to need the 1 liter equals 1,000 milliliters conversion. You're going to use this quite often because many times when we make a solution like this, I'm not using an entire uh, 1 liter. I'm using a, a milliliter amount. All right, so let's get on to some calculations. All right, so here's our first problem. What is the molarity of a hydrochloric acid solution that has 0.75 moles of HCl dissolved in 0.500 liters of solution? So first you have to ask yourself, do we have the moles already in this problem? And we do. actually wrote it down already. Do we have the volume in liters already? We do. It's 0.5, so I placed that already in the denominator. So you just take these two numbers and you just divide them. So you take 0.75 divided by 0.5 and you get 1.5 molar solution, which is the same as the solution I used in that magnesium hydrochloric acid demo. My point is that, again, remember, we had half the volume, so we have half the moles. So think about if I only used 25 milliliters of this 1.5 molar solution, how many moles did I actually use in that experiment? All right, so here's our second problem. What's the molarity of a sucrose solution made by dissolving 0.6 moles of sucrose in enough water to make 500 milliliters of a solution. So again, ask yourself, do I have the moles? I do, it's 0.6. Do I have liters? I do not. I have 500 milliliters. So the first thing I have to do is convert my milliliters to liters. So with your conversion card, you can kind of see that milliliters needs to be in the denominator. Liters needs to be in the numerator. So what you're going to do first is you're just going to divide by 1,000. I'm just going to move these off. 
And then grab your calculator, just kind of save some time here. This is going to equal 0 0.500. 0. Keep those zeros if we said that those were measured. Um, those also need to be then trailing zeros to give us three sig figs. Then next, you just got to take your 0 0.60 moles of sucrose. And maybe this was the solution I had at the beginning. Divided by your 0.5, okay? And then you could probably just do this in your head, but let's just check. So you have 0.6 divided by 0.5, which would be doubled, which is 1.2. And again, what that means is when they put the capital M, that means that's how many um, moles, okay, that I would have of sucrose if I had an entire liter. So I try to do something similar to the last problem to kind of slowly work upwards towards some more difficult questions. All right, so there's number two. All right, so here's our third problem. What's the molarity of a solution if you have 4.2 grams of sodium bicarbonate, which is just baking soda, and it's dissolved in enough water to make 100 mils of solution. So this time we don't have moles and we do not have liters, either one. So this is kind of the next step up is what do you do next? Well, I need to use the molar mass. Remember, molar mass is defined as the grams um, for one mole. But I need the grams in the denominator. So what I need to look up is the molar mass of sodium bicarbonate or calculate it. So by grabbing a periodic table. And I'm just going to do really rounded roller, molar masses. So what you're going to do is you're going to take 16 times 3 for the oxygen, plus 12 for the carbon, plus 1 for the hydrogen, and then plus 23 for the um, sodium. So then I get uh, 84 grams per one mole for sodium bicarbonate, again, which is just baking soda. So you divide these two, and this will be your mole amount, which is 4.2 divided by 84. So I get 0 0.05, move this out of the way, moles of sodium bicarbonate, which is our baking soda. And then the next thing I need to do is I need to convert from my milliliters to liters. So again, using that same conversion we've used, which is 1,000 milliliters is one liter. And if you grab your calculator, I'm going to carry the extra digits here because those are all significant. There's my volume that I'm putting this in. So again, I'm going to take my moles and divide it by my liters to get my concentration for this solution. So again, I have a much smaller volume. I'm kind of working down into more realistic volumes, kind of like what I had at the beginning of this whole experiment with my salt or sugar. And then you just divide these two. So 0 0.05 divided by 0 0.1, and I get that this is a 0.5 molar sodium bicarbonate solution. Again, one more time. This is if I would have 0.5 moles of the sodium bicarbonate, then I would have to have an entire liter of that whole solution. But again, that seems excessive to always be using a liter of an entire solution. So there's our third problem. This third problem could have been worked one more way before we move on. Um, I'm going to show you that you can take these steps that are above here and you can create a long stoichiometric lineup to do the same thing. So what you do is you divide by the 84 grams of sodium bicarbonate to get the moles that we need. Okay, so that's your first step. And some people might prefer, prefer this method. I usually do. Um, so you divide that. And then don't, don't like stop your conversion. You can put one and then just divide by the volume. So you have, um, you know, you have basically you have moles in the numerator and you divide it by liters in the denominator and you'll get the same 0 0.500 um, mol uh, molarity. Actually, I should add another zero here for significant figures. 0 0.50 molarity, whether I do this kind of in two steps or I have it all in one. So that's another way to work the third problem a little differently. Here's a fourth problem. I'm going to show you how to do this problem three different ways, and then you can kind of choose which way you like. How many grams of potassium nitrate are required to prepare 250 milliliters of a 0.7 molar solution? So you can treat it like we've done before, which is we got to have the liters, we have to use liters, and we have to have moles, and then we'll use moles to basically get to molar mass and then mass. So let's do it that way first, and then we'll see what the other ways look like, and you can choose which one you like. So the first thing again, and you'll get faster at this step. At some point, you may even just be doing this step in your head. So first, you have to convert to liters, so it's 0.25 liters. Then you're going to take your 0 0.250 liters, we'll carry all those three sig figs, and then you're going to use the molarity. Remember that, again, it's 0 0.700 moles of this potassium nitrate, which we haven't needed the formula for yet. 
um, until you get to this next step. So there's your next step. That's going to be the moles of the potassium nitrate. So let's just find that first here. Um, 0.25 and then times 0.1, or no, sorry, not times 0 0.1, 0 0.25 times 0 0.7. So I get point, let's put this here. I get point, what did I get, point zero point seven, not seven, what am I saying? Point one seven five, holy moly. Now I do need to know what the formula for potassium nitrate is. So using your ion sheet, if you don't know it, but potassium nitrate is KNO3. Um, the reason why is we need the molar mass for potassium nitrate to move on. So if you're going to treat this as the kind of the way we've been doing before, we need the molar mass of this. And the, I'm just going to tell you that the molar mass is for every one mole of potassium nitrate. And we need the molar mass with the mass in the numerator, grams of KNO3. The molar mass is 101.1 uh, for potassium nitrate. Okay, so then just take your 0.175 and multiply it by 101.1. And I get 17.69-ish, so it's just 17.7 with significant figures of the number have number remember have number unit label. I'm having a hard time getting through these problems today. So there's one way. Now what I want to do is just quickly show you the other two choices, okay? This one's sort of an in between the, this one and the next one. So what you could do instead of these two steps is um, you could convert to liters, which you might just get used to doing in your head. Create it like a, a, um, a, a ratio <laughs> and then find the moles and then take the moles and use the molar mass to find the mass. So that's one method. The other method, method which I really, really like, I think it's a lot you know, sleeker than all of that, is just using plain old stoichiometry and taking your milliliters, converting it to liters, use your molarity as a conversion, and then using your molar mass to get to the mass. And to me, that's a way faster way to do four. But I did want to show you different ways to get the same answer. Okay, so that was our question number four. So this is the fifth problem. How many moles of acetic acid are in five milliliters of 0.84 molar acetic acid solution? That just means acetic acid was dissolved in water. In fact, this is the molarity of vinegar that you have probably in your house. So the easiest way to do this problem, maybe even give it a shot first. So if you want, pause the video and try it on your own. If not, here are the two ways you could solve this problem. Number one, you could go the stoichiometric route, which I prefer, which is just dividing by the milliliters and then multiplying by the mole amount. At this point, I wouldn't want to divide by the 0.84. That wouldn't make any sense because the liters wouldn't cancel. Um, and then the other way would be to first, this is the other choice, is to first convert it to liters. And then what's most common people do is they then create a ratio and then they solve for the question mark by taking 0.84 divided by 1 and then multiplying by 0 0.005. But that's essentially what you're doing up here in, in kind of one you know, sleek, easier step. All right, so great job. Keep up the good work. Uh, good luck trying your own molarity problems. And by the way, it was sugar. <laughs>